Hi, I'm Amy. In this video, I'm going to be talking through the solution to the seat reservation problem. As a reminder, the puzzle is set up so that we have 100 tables in a restaurant. There have been 100 guests that have made a booking at the restaurant, including yourself. Guest number one arrives and the booking system is down, and so they get seated randomly by the restaurant staff. After that, the other guests arrive one by one and they get seated at the table that they booked if it's available, and if it's not, then they're going to get seated randomly by the restaurant staff. And now you arrive pretty late, you're the last person to get there, and so there's only going to be one table remaining by the time you get there, and that's where you're going to be seated. And what we want to look at is what's the probability that the table you get sat at is the one that you booked. And now 100 tables feels like a large number to be working with, and I think that the best way to break this problem down is to maybe have a think about a smaller number of tables to start off with. So let's start by having a look at a two table example and see what the probability is. So we've got table number one that was booked by guest number one and we've got your table that you booked. So guest number one is going to arrive first and there are clearly only two different scenarios that can take place. So first of all they could be sat at their own table, table number one, and secondly they could get sat at your table. And because both these things happen randomly we know that they're both going to happen with probability a half. And now when you arrive, if guest number one is sat at table number one, then your table's the one that's free and you're going to get sat there. In this scenario where guest number one is sat at your table, then the one that's left waiting for you is going to be table number one. And so you don't get the table that you booked. And so if we look at both of these scenarios, the only way that you get sat at your table is where guest number one has been sat at table number one. And so that happens with probability a half. Great, so we see that we get a half in this case. And maybe you could already see that before we started. It's quite a simple example. And so let's make it ever so slightly more complicated and let's have a look at a three table example instead. So the table that was booked by guest number one, guest number two, and then your table. This time when guest number one arrives, we can see that there are three different scenarios that could take place. So the first of these would be that they sit at their own table. The second one would be that they sit at table number two. And the third one would be that they sit at your table. And as before, these are all equally likely. So we know that they're going to happen with probability a third. In this scenario where guest number one is sat at table number one, then when guest number two arrives, their table will be free. So they'll sit there and then that leaves your table available when you arrive. So you will get the table that you booked. In this scenario here where guest number one is sat at your table, then obviously it can't be free when you arrive and so you don't get the table that you booked. So let's have a look at this middle scenario where guest number one is sat at table number two. Now when guest number two arrives, their table isn't available and so they've got a choice of where to sit. And so they can either be sat at table number one or your table. And both are equally likely, so both happen with probability a half. And so if guest number two is sat at table number one, then your table will be available when you arrive, so you get the table that you booked. And if guest number two is sat at your table, then you can't sit there, you'll be sat at table number one when you arrive. And so if we have a look at the overall picture, the only way that you end up sat at your table is either when guest number one is sat at table number one, which happened with probability a third, or when guest number one sits at table number two, which happens with probability a third as well, and then guest number two goes on to sit at table number one, which happens with probability a half. So the overall probability is going to be equal to a third plus a third times by a half, which is equal to a half. Now this I think is pretty interesting. We've got a half for the two table example and for the three table example. And so at this point you kind of start to think maybe there's a bit of a pattern in our results. And I think what we want to do now is have a look at the hundred table example and see whether we can apply a similar process to work out what the probability will be. Especially now we maybe have a slight suspicion that it could be a half but it also could still be something else as well. And we're going to start off by looking at what happens when guest number one arrives. And when guest number one arrives, there are three distinct cases that can occur. Case number one 
will be where guest number one sits at their own table. And in this case, then guest number two's table will be available when they arrive, so they'll sit there all the way up to guest number 99, and so your table will be available when you get there. So you sit at the table that you booked. The second scenario is when guest number one sits at one of the tables between number two and number 99. And in this case, we don't actually know what will happen when you arrive at that point. We'd have to determine that further on when a different guest arrived. And finally, case number three is where guest number one sits at your table. And now obviously your table's taken, so you can't be sat there. So you don't get the table that you booked. So we can see here that case number one and case number three are deterministic. So if either one of those occurs, then we know where you end up being sat and we can sort of end the puzzle there. But if case number two happens, then we don't know what's gonna happen further down the line and we don't know which table that you end up with. And now there are 100 tables in this scenario. So the probability of guest number one being sat at table number one is one over 100. The probability of case number two occurring is 98 over 100 and the probability of case number three is also one over 100. Okay, so let's consider case two a little bit further. Let's assume that we haven't had case number one or case number three happen with guest number one. So let's choose randomly that guest number one sits at table number six. And now when guest number two up to number five arrive, their tables will all be available and so they can just sit there. But when guest number six arrives, their table is gonna be taken and so they have a decision about where to sit. And now we get the exact same cases as before. So guest number six can sit at table number one, and then guest number seven up to number 99 can all take their seats and you get your table. Or guest number six could end up sat somewhere between table number seven and table number 99, where again, we then don't know where you end up sat. Or we can get case three occurring again in which case your table is taken by guest number six and you can't sit there. Now this time there are 95 tables remaining. So the probability of this case is one over 95. This one is gonna be 93 over 95. And this one's gonna be one over 95. Now again, let's consider case two a bit further. So let's assume that guest number six sits at table number 42. So table number 42 is then taken when guest number 42 arrives and everyone before that point will have been sat in the right seat. So guest number 42. And now again, maybe unsurprisingly, we get the same three cases as before. So we either have case one, in which case guests 43 up to 49 can all take their seats and you can take your seat. Or we can have guest number 42 sitting at any of the tables between 43 and 99. And finally, we could have that guest number 42 is sat at your table. And obviously then you don't get to sit there because they've taken it. And so we can see that this will keep happening and it could be that we get all the way to guest number 99 and then they are the guest that either has to choose case number one or case number three. But we know that definitely at least one guest has to choose either case number one or case number three, because that's the only way we determine whether you're sat at table number one or your table. If that decision was left to guess number 99, then they would have, for case number one, they would have a half probability, and for case number three, they would also have a half probability. So there's no chance of case number two because there aren't any further tables. And so if we have a look back, We've obviously just chosen random numbers here, but this could have happened for any of the guests. So for guest number one, we have probability one over 100 of case number one occurring and probability one over 100 of case number three occurring. So they're both equal. For guest number six, again, we can see that they're equal. The probability is gonna be one over 59 for guest number 42. And again, they're equal, all the way up to guest number 99, who again, they're obviously equal for. And so, as I said, we don't know which of the guests is going to choose case number one or case number three, but we know that definitely one of them will, and at most one of them will, because both table one and your table can't both be taken. And so, for every single guest, there's equal probability of them choosing case one or case three. And so, the overall probability is going to be equal to a half that case number one occurs and you get your table.
So now we see that our intuition was right and we do get a half again for 100 tables because following that previous line of argument in the 100 table example, we can see that it's not the number of tables that's important. What's really important is because of the random seating, every single guest has an equally likely probability of choosing table number one compared to their probability of choosing your table. And so this equal probability leads to the probability being a half overall. I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching. Bye.